What is up, Eagles fans? It's E-Rock, and no, the dome light isn't on. It isn't even nighttime right now. It is a beautiful 70 degree and sunny day. I'm out here on Union Beach. Had the opportunity to do a little striped bass fishing overlooking the New York City skyline. This morning it was high tide, so the action was a little better. Got into uh, a couple fish, one a 24 inch, not keeper size, but you know, decent, decent. Made it made for a good morning. And uh, the tide has gone out, so the fishing has significantly slowed down to an absolute crawl. So I figured I'd take this opportunity to, to pop on camera, make a little video. I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about the Eagles draft and also some other off-season moves that they've made since the last time you and I had spoken. And hopefully, at some point in this video, you will see me th absolutely throw it on the ground and run towards the fishing poles because I'm hoping they go off. But until, the mean until then, I'm just kind of killing time. But I want to talk about the NFL draft. I uh, didn't get the opportunity to speak to you guys about the draft. And look, I'm not going to pretend like I know a lot about these draft picks or watch film on them or, uh, you know, broken down their tape or even watch a lot of college football. But what I will say is I like where the Eagles' head is at, especially in the first three picks, because they picked up three really key offensive positions that cost a lot of money in the future. I'll start with the left tackle, Dillard. Uh, from everything I hear, this guy could have been the top uh, offensive tackle prospect in the NFL draft. Got a ton of athletic ability. Uh, can certainly develop into uh, the left tackle of the future. Uh, so I like the pick. And look, left tackles are never cheap. Just ask the New York Giants right now with Soldier. So the fact that you've got a first-round pick that you can get a fifth-year option on, that you can have uh, for a very long time, that can take one year to learn under a Hall of Fame caliber left tackle in Jason Peters it, it, is a total benefit. I mean, it's a win. There were rumors about the Eagles trying to move up all the way to the Dolphins pick to pick up Dillard. Couldn't do it. And then they tried again um, with, um, who, who did they try to go up with? They tried to get up to 16 again to, 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 to get this guy. That's how high they were on him. Uh, fortunately, they didn't have to give up too much to swap out with the Ravens. Uh, to go up and get him, but they wanted to move ahead of the Texans because they knew they were getting an offensive tackle. Some people have said that this uh, is definitely a negative on the Mulata experiment. I don't necessarily see it that way. With Mulata, he's got a ton of talent, a ton of upside. He's absolutely raw. He's still another year from even seeing any sort of playing time. But with uh, Mulata, you're really playing with house money. It's just house money. It's a seventh round pick. If he can develop into a backup sort of, you know, swing tackle where he can back up both the left and the right side. Don't forget you still got Pryor on this team. Don't forget you still got Big V on this team, at least for another year. Chances are he'll be gone uh, at the end of the season. Or they might even try to trade him at some point during camp. But, uh, you know, Big V, maybe you move him to the inside. And then you got two quality backup tackles. Actually, three. You know, the offensive line with the addition of Dillard went from, like, being very thin to all of a sudden you've got a lot of good good depth there. And let's hope you don't need it, but chances are, judging by the way, Jason Peters has been checking himself out of games the last couple of seasons, especially last season, uh, you're going to need them. So you can't have enough quality offensive linemen. Uh, the Miles Sanders pick, absolutely love it. Um, do I think, he, he, you know, he's Saquon Barkley or, Barkley or Ezekiel Elliott? No, and I don't think anybody that really follows Penn State does either. But now all of a sudden you went from having no running backs and the year before, you know, your top rusher was a undrafted rookie free agent and Josh Adams. All of a sudden now you got Jordan Had uh, Howard and Miles Sanders. Like, holy shit. Again, you, you went from... You know, thin on the offensive line to quality depth on the offensive line. You went from having no running backs to goddamn, goddamn Eagles. Good job. It's good to see how we put a high priority on the running back position. My dudes at the Go Birds podcast, they had me a little worried at the draft party. They said it would be day three until uh, a running back was taken. But I'm, 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 I'm happy that they're putting a priority on the position and they locked down a running back again. You know, he's going to be cheap. You're going to have him for the next four years. Um, that's quality. And, hey, look, last time you drafted a running back in the second round, it was LaShawn McCoy, and you hit and you hit big. So running backs aren't cheap, just like left tackles aren't cheap. So uh, the fact that you're going to have this guy when Carson Wentz needs to be paid at a, at a 
low rookie deal is such a benefit for this offense and helps protect Carson Wentz with having a quality running game. And uh, J.J. Ortega-Whiteside, uh, don't know a whole lot about him. I've heard a lot of comparisons to uh, Alshon Jeffrey. The one thing I have heard uh, about him is short hands, you know, possession receivers, 50-50 ball, go up and get it. Uh, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, you know, you, you can't have enough good quality wide receivers. I mean, can you imagine the red zone for a second? Think about this. You know, can you imagine J.J. on one side, Alshon on the other side, you got Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard? Jesus Christ. Uh, I mean, that, 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 is, that is quality right there. Um, I do find it kind of interesting in the fact that, uh, you know, Jeffrey Lurie at the owners' meetings did state that they were not cocky enough to, you know, think that they're going to hit on every pick, and they're looking at volume. They, they want quantity with their draft picks, and here they walk away with five picks. Um, so it is... At that point, it is so important that you hit, at, at least on the first three. I know a lot of people don't like the defensive end out of Penn State that was drafted, and then they kind of got that quarterback, which people were like, eh, about. Totally understandable. Don't, don't blame me at all. Uh, I kind of see that quarterback pick. Like, look, if you're only taking five players in the draft, why draft a quarterback there? Are, are you that in love with the guy? But listen, you hit on the first three, the rest of it's fucking gravy. I, I, I honestly don't care. Um... They upgraded the linebacker position with Zach Brown. Uh, I think he is better than Jordan Hicks. He's healthier than Jordan Hicks uh, from what I've seen. Now, that guy, I've actually did watch a, a little bit of highlights on him and stuff like that. And the one thing that I took away from those highlights is, A, fast, plays the run well, and um, sure tackler, really sure tackler. And that's what you need on this defense. Uh, I think he puts in the middle. Bradham goes to his, you know, the, the strong side again. And, uh, you know, then you got Camus as kind of a, a swing guy. But it was a – that was an important addition to the linebacking core. And, uh, you know, I – I don't want to say it, but I do want to say it. I don't want to say it, but I do want to say it. I don't want to say it because I know what you're going to say, but I want to say it. The Eagles, once again, have quietly had one of the best off-seasons in the NFL. They've made a couple trades. They've drafted some quality playmakers. They've picked up a couple guys. They, they, they've, they've got rid of some dead weight. They've quietly had one of the best off-seasons in the NFL, and nobody is talking about them. And that makes me so happy. Because the last time the Eagles kind of won the offseason without anybody talking about them was 2017. And this offseason's got me feeling all sorts of 2017-ish. Now, I'm not getting ahead of myself. I'm not promising anything. But if you just take a look at the offseason and the moves that they made and the veterans that they brought in, I mean, there's guys you forgot about. You already forgot about Malik Jackson. You already forgot about him. Yeah, that was, that was one of the first big signings. An upgrade over Timmy Jernigan. By the way, got Timmy Jernigan back. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and now you upgrade the middle linebacker position. Significant, monstrous upgrade, upgrade to the run game. Monster. And now you're adding depth along the offensive line. Um, defensive end position, you brought back Brandon Graham, a leader in the locker room. All, all, all your corners are coming back healthy. You know, I'm just, God, I'm, I'm feeling all sorts of 2017-ish, which at the very least makes me feel real optimistic about this upcoming Philadelphia Eagles season. I can't freaking wait. I can't wait for training camp. You know, the NFL draft party was amazing. We were on the 50-yard line, you know, watching the, watching the drafts, and it just made me miss football. Oh, by the way, we were there when the uh, Giants selected Daniel Jones. Let me, say, let me say this about the Giants draft pick. Let me say this. Because I got I, I, I to gotta get this one in here. So, if they blew the sixth overall pick, they've, in essence, shortened the career of their last year's second overall pick in Saquon Barkley. 
Because even the Blaine Gabberts of the world, even the Byron Leftwiches of the world, even the, I don't know, insert uh, first round quarterback that just didn't pan out here. It's going to take them three years before they realize they made a mistake. Yeah, listen, when you're the sixth overall pick, you better be the guy. And they're going to give you every opportunity to be that guy. And if Eli is going to be riding off in the uh, sunset and or getting old yellered at the end of the season, that means you tack on at least another three years after that. So that's four years. Now, Saquon is only 22 years old. He'll be 26. But nevertheless, as a Giants fan, you got to be concerned that right now, David Gettleman and the New York Giants totally bury Sanders, Saquon Barkley, where he, he's not going to have a quarterback and his rookie deal is going to be up, and they got to start all over again and try to find another quarterback after this kid doesn't work out. And then that's going to take some more time, and Saquon Barkley is going to end up being, come on, Rods, go off. God, fishing has gotten so slow. I mean, it's a beautiful day, so I can't complain, and I get to talk to you, but good golly, there is absolutely nothing happening right now. Anyway, if you're a Giants fan, you got to hope that they didn't get Saquon, or they didn't uh, Barry Sanders, Saquon Barkley with that pick. Honestly, I thought, uh, if anything, what the Giants would try to do is tank next season on purpose, kind of pull a Sixers maneuver, and try to march up to the front of the draft board next year to get their quarterback. Um, you know, hey, you might have blew it. Uh, as far as the Washington Redskins draft goes, uh, it looks good on paper. I think they did a good job. They, they got some guys that, uh, that anybody would have picked at that position, so... That's good. The Dallas Cowboys, uh, you know, missed on their, uh, you know, missed having a first round pick. But you know, Amari Cooper is worth that first round pick. So it's going to be an interesting season again. So uh, I'm going to sit here, try to catch some more of the tan, catch some more fish. Uh, Fourth and John returns next Tuesday, and we have a huge promotion going on uh, with Bud Light in regards to the uh, Eagles Autism Challenge. So that's going to be huge. Keep an eye out for that. Gail's going to be riding in it. Uh, we got some more people raising some money for a great cause. So until then, let's go birds, and I will see you later.